In this Power Apps video, we will take a first look at the new PDF function in Power Apps. The PDF function allows us to generate PDF directly from Power App screens, galleries, or containers. We can leverage the generated PDF blob and send it out as an email attachment or showcase it in the PDF viewer control or send it out to Power Automate so we can store that PDF file in any data source of our choice. So let's check it out in action. The PDF function, which enables us to create PDF from screens, galleries, and containers. Let's take an example here of a simple Power App screen that has a gallery control that is showcasing data from a connected SharePoint list. To generate a PDF document, I can insert a button or an icon. In this case, I'll pick the icon PDF document. So when the user selects this icon, I will use the new function called PDF. And this function requires a property called target. Target is the control to export as a PDF. This can be a screen, gallery control, or container control. In this scenario, I will pick my entire screen, which is my home screen. So this function will return a data type blob. And this blob is nothing but the generated PDF file. I would like to show this information in a PDF viewer control in Power Apps. So for that, I will set a variable here. I will call this var PDF blob. Output of the PDF function will be stored in this variable whenever I select this PDF icon. I will insert the PDF viewer control. And for this control, there's a property called document. This I will set to my variable, which is var PDF blob. So here's my app in action. If I click PDF, it will generate the PDF based on the screen itself. The PDF function can also be targeted towards a specific gallery. The gallery in this case is called gal data. For the PDF function, the control that I will provide is gal data. This time, if I generate the PDF file, it will only include that gallery. The PDF function also has an optional second parameter, which are the options for generating the PDF. The first option is orientation. This is where you can specify whether the generated PDF is in landscape mode or portrait mode. And in Power Apps, we have already been provided enums for these. So let's say I search for landscape. You can see how IntelliSense picks that enum. You can define the size, which is the page size of the generated PDF. For this as well, we have an enum called paper size. And this will list out all the different paper sizes that are supported. Let's say in this case, I pick a one margin. This margins pages created in the PDF. This is of type string. So let's say I place a margin of 24 points each. Let's close the options function for now. And let's test the PDF document this time that gets generated. You will notice a few things. It's gone in landscape mode. The size is A1 and it has applied the margin as well. A key property of the PDF function is expand containers. This will expand the hidden part of the target control and convert it to PDF. This I will set it to true. So the scenario here is generate a PDF of this gallery and expand the hidden part of the target control. Now let's say in this case, my gallery doesn't have enough real estate to showcase the items within it. If expand containers is set to false as an example, and if I generate the PDF file, you will note that it only shows the three items that are visible on the screen. But 
if I change this to true, and if I run the PDF function again, this time it will list out all the items that are held in that gallery control. Here I have an event itinerary power app. Now, if I wanted to generate a PDF file of this specific screen and send out the generated PDF blob as an email attachment to the current logged in user of the Power App, we can take the following steps. I've added my PDF icon. I will ensure that I connect to the Office 365 Outlook connector. I can leverage Office 365 Outlook dot send email v2. I would like to send this email to the current logged in user. So user dot email will give me that information. What's the subject? I will call this my event itinerary report. What's the body of the email? We'll call it PDF from Power Apps. And for the additional options here, one of them is attachments. Because this expects tabular data, I will leverage the table function. And within this, for my attachment, I need a name. So the name property I will use event itinerary dot PDF. That PDF extension is extremely important. Comma, the content bytes. This would be that PDF blob that the PDF function will generate. So I need this blob from my gallery control, which is gal events. I will close this object. That's my attachment. I will close the table of attachments, close this property and close the send an email function. Logged in as Reza. I click on this PDF icon. It has gone ahead and sent out that email. Signed in as Reza in Outlook. Here is the email that I have received. And here is the attached PDF file. Now let's change this gallery control. And let's say we are leveraging a data table to showcase that event itinerary information. Now the challenge with the data table is that for the PDF function, if I provide data table as the control for it to generate the PDF, it will throw an error because it doesn't support data tables, but it does support containers. So here I will insert one of the container controls and within this container control, and now, the container control in which this data table lives, I can leverage that as the target control property to my PDF function. So if I click PDF, the email that I now receive has the data table within it. Another common scenario is around a SharePoint list item and attachments. In this Power App example, the user can create data and at the same time, attach files to the SharePoint list item by clicking on the camera control so it will take live pictures or use the pen input control so the user can provide signatures or drawings, for example. In my home page, the gallery is listing out all the items from the SharePoint list. And when I select any of these list items on the on select property of my gallery items, I am storing the attachments related to the selected item in a collection called call attachments. And then I'm navigating the user to my form screen. So if I pick this specific item, it leads me to my form screen that shows the information related to the list item that was submitted. Now in here, if I would like to also showcase attachments, I will insert a vertical gallery control. The items property for this would be that collection of attachments and the layout for this gallery control. I will pick the two column layout here and change the wrap count to one. So it lists out all the uploaded items one by one. 
you can see how it's showcasing the form data and the associated attachments. And this is true for any specific item that I select. Now, this is where I would like to give the user the ability to generate a PDF file, the PDF icon. And when the user selects this, I would like to send an email that has all the attachments, which are my images that are being listed out in this gallery of attachments. I am leveraging expand containers true purely because there could be multiple images and I would like this entire container, which is my gallery to expand. Let's click PDF. Here is that email. Here is the PDF file. And here are the attachments. And this is dynamic. If I go and pick a different item, this item that has multiple attachments. If I click PDF, the email that I receive now will have all of those attachments. Now let's say the PDF that I am generating, I would also like to include this form control experience. I would have to ensure that I have this form control and this gallery control inside a container. So for my screen, I will add the vertical container control. I will first cut and paste my form control within it. And then I will cut and paste my gallery control within it. And this container is what I would target in my PDF function. So this time, the email that I receive, the PDF file attachment would have both the form control and my gallery of attachments. I have my home screen of my Power App that has a lot of different controls within it. And I would like to export to PDF only this gallery control. I click PDF. Here is the email that I have received. You can see how this is a multi-page PDF experience. We will take the generated PDF blob of data and store it in a data source of our choice. And for that, we will take the help of Power Automate, which we can create directly from the Power App experience itself. I will create a flow from blank, delete the trigger action and replace it with the new Power Apps V2 trigger action, which allows us to add input types directly on the fly here. One of them is of type file. So I will select this and let's say the generated file, I would like to store it in a SharePoint document library. So I will use the create file action from the SharePoint connector, connect it to one of my SharePoint sites. In this site, I can pick my document library. I have a library called Power Apps Documents. That's where I would like to store the PDF file. So I'll pick this. Here I need the file name and the file content. My property, I've called it as file. For the file content, I can straight out pick file. Now, if you hover over this, you can see the expression behind it. It says trigger body file content bytes. However, this file property also has the name of the file within it. If you go to peak code, you can see the properties related to the file object. There's a name property and content bytes. So this gives me the content bytes. If I simply copy this, go to file name and go to expression and paste that right here. And from here, I need the name. Since I'm typing the expression in the expression editor, I do not need this at curly brace starting point and the curly brace ending point. I will give my flow a name and I will click on save. This should go ahead and save my flow and at the same time connect it to my power app. Once the flow is connected in my app, on click of the PDF function, I can say save PDF to SharePoint and use the run method, which expects the file property as an object. The file will have this object that has two properties, name, 
I will call this helpdesk.pdf. Remember, it's important to give the extension and then content bytes is my second property. This would be PDF of my screen and I will ensure that expand containers is set to true. So I'll close my PDF function, close the file object, close the param for file that I'm passing and close the run method. Let's try this out. I click on PDF, it triggers the flow. Once the flow has been called, in this scenario, the flow has completed successfully. The trigger action, which is Power Apps V2, received the file object, and then the create file SharePoint action was able to create the file in my document library, which was called Power Apps Documents. And here is the generated PDF file. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.